Top of the morning to you, or afternoon or evening, whenever you may be watching. My name is Scott, representing SL in Game Slam, and I am here with Sergio to bring you the next episode of the Pokemon Blue Nuzlocke. And as always, with one exception, two episodes ago, we will start out here with a team recap. So we have Nick Man, who is level 20, one level away from being able, able to dilly dilly with the boys. A bag 25, uh, most powerful member of the team. You know him, you love him. Austin, who unfortunately did have to learn cut last time, but level 27, the captain of the team, followed by Kevin, the Pidgeotto, who is surprisingly the second highest level on the team, but has been very consistent as well. And Cornus Boy, the Nitto Queen. Look at that defense. Look at that wall. Look at that great wall to China. So the plan for today is pretty much to just power through this route. Um, you know, th there's a good amount of trainers here, so we should be able to be getting some nice cash flow as we see a Clefairy hit the field. Um, and uh, I believe there is an encounter we will be able to partake in as well. So some fun stuff there. Um, yes, I did do my homework this time to make sure that uh, there is an encounter available on this route without strictly duplicates, as has been the case, as is the tradition, as is the tradition. So we're getting slapped silly here, and uh, we're just going to launch our thick body slamming all over this Clefairy and uh, take it out with a scratch here. So first knockout of the match. Eh, not really a ton of experience there, but we're going to continue here with Cornus Boy. And I am okay with this matchup as long as we don't see any American Idol shenanigans, if you know what I'm saying. The move called Sing, but we're not going to see it. Critical hit, and Cornus Boy growing to a well-deserved level 25. So down goes last. Stop. Don't be so mean to my Clefairy. Okay. Okay. What's up, Baldy? I'm a rambling, gambling dude. Lord, I was born a rambling, gambling dude. Oh man, look at this guy. He wants to fight with a Growlithe. But, uh, you know, today, since it is one of the more grindy episodes, I know it's probably not the favorite of everybody here, but it is necessary. Um, I want to do sort of an open floor, uh, not on cereal and milk this time, but on the new generation 8 uh pokemon direct announcement we had a week ago which was for the galar region uh which is going to be the new generation 8 which looks to me from the video um to be sort of a london theme or england theme uh there, there was a big clock tower and uh they also revealed the starters of course uh, you wouldn't know this if you live under a rock but they did reveal the Generation 8 starters. So, I want to talk about that a little bit. I want to talk about my expectations and uh, pretty much just go from there. So, Sword and Shield version are the names. I will say the logos are very clean. Very clean logos for the new games. Uh, they did a great job with that. And the name Sword and Shield, you know, It'll make more sense once we jump into the story. Uh, for now, it's I saw a lot of jokes on Twitter uh, about how you know they're they're running out of things that correlate to each other where they can make two versions like the old red and blue and gold and silver. Um, we'll keep Nick Man in for this one. Whereas, uh, what were some of the jokes on Twitter like? I don't even like Coke and Pepsi version. You know they they were taking it to that level of how they'll make the future versions. Um, but Sword and Shield, I mean, it sounds cool to me. It's a uh, nice shout out to Joey Wheeler uh, with, the, with the shield and sword uh, for his battle warrior there in, in Duelist Kingdom. But uh, I do plan on getting sword version myself. There really is no, um, you know, no thought process behind that other than the fact that um, I, I usually get the first of the two games, if that makes sense. So, red and blue, I got red. Gold and silver, I got gold. 
um, with the with the two exceptions being Sapphire and Moon. Um, for Sapphire, I just thought I liked the color better, and I thought Sapphire was a cooler word. Uh, when that game came out, I think I was eight years old, and I, I thought it was Saphir. Um, and also Moon version, I just thought had a cool aesthetic to it with the the different time change where when you played in the day it was dark and uh, when you played at night it was light. Hashtag bars. Growing a level there for Nick Man. And so yeah, I, I do plan on getting sword version. And now to unpack what I think about the starters a little bit. So we have Grookey, Score Bunny, and Sobble are the three starters in their respective grass, fire, and water types. Um, per honestly, and I, I would be critical about this if I really felt otherwise, I'm pretty happy with them. I'm pretty happy with what we're looking at. Um, compared to some prior generations where I feel like they've dropped the ball in one of the three, Definitely Poplio last time. Um, I really think, just at a glance, of course we don't know what these Pokemon are going to turn into. At a glance, I'm happy with what I'm seeing for the new starters. So, Grookey is the Grass Monkey. And out of the names, I like Grookey the best. That, that's a good name. That seems like something that, you know, they would have come up with back in the day. So... I do like Grookey, and uh, shoot, I wish we could have got Thunderbolt on this guy. As much as it's a nice check for a bag to have, uh, that would have been real nice for Nick Man to have, because I don't know when he learns an electric attack. Uh, thankfully, Whirlwind is not affecting him, and I think I've asked for clarification on this in the comments before, and have yet to receive it, uh, but does Whirlwind, uh, does it work when the Pokemon you're using it is a higher level than you? Because I don't think it is. Um, otherwise, you could have, like, uh, Focus Sash, you know, level 5 Pidgey, or whatever level it learns Whirlwind, and you could Whirlwind out, you know, a plus 6 Dragon Danced Dragonite. Um, so, you know, just something dropping through the noggin there. But, uh, back to the stars real quick. Um, Grookey, I like the name best. Score Bunny, I like the design the best. Um, it gives me thoughts that we could potentially have a fire electric hybrid. Um, it has kind of a, a red and, like, kind of a gold or yellow color scheme alongside it. Um, I don't like that leer, so let's see what this Sonic Boom does. Okay, yeah, we're in a good spot there. As long as we don't get poisoned here, um, I feel good staying in with Nick Man, but I do want to monitor this as to not gargle it away. Okay, okay, yeah, we're going to switch him right out in case of a Sonic Boom miss. There is no reason to put him on the line there for uh, a measly level 19's experience. So, yeah, so Score Bunny, I'm pretty hyped about. Um, and Sobble, uh, of the three, I'm probably the least excited to be honest, but going back to which one am I going to choose, um, I probably will choose Sobble, just because it's been my tradition to always choose the water starter first. So, as is the tradition, uh, that is my plan, is to go with Sobble. And with Pikachu coming in here, I'm going to put Cornus Boy in. I like that matchup a little better. A little bit better. But uh, definitely let me know your thoughts. Let me know which version you plan on getting. And ooh, that was a thick body slam. And uh, which starter you think looks the best. Um, we picked up 38 from the payday. That's nice. Um, another point I wanted to make was just the nature of the game being on the Switch as opposed to the, you know, as opposed to the typical handheld here. I always got this right next to me or else I have anxiety. Um, it's going to be different, but at the same time, it's really not going to be that different because, of course, the Switch 
can be a mobile uh, gaming device as well. So going off the trailer again, um, just really letting this marinate, um, it did look to have graphics much similar to Pokemon Let's Go. Um, I just kind of noticed the, the way the trainer runs is about the same cadence as uh, it is in Let's Go. As you can see, I overthink these things quite thoroughly. Uh, that's why they pay me the big bucks. And, um, you know, they really didn't take the leap to make it a Breath of the Wild aesthetic of a, a truly open world, um, but it is a step up from what we've seen, and to me, any innovation is good innovation, especially after me being famously an Ultra Moon hater. Um, I am happy to see some kind of innovation, and I'm interested to see with sort of the London, England theme to the Gala region. I, I guess that's, you could just say that's kind of my speculation. But I do think uh, with that clock tower and that, that brick uh, architecture look to it, um, I could, that's just what I foresee at a glance. Um, I think they could do big things with it. So the more innovation, the better, um, as long as they don't miss the integrity of the game, and I don't think they will. Um, but yeah, I, I am excited for it, and also looking at the logos of Sword and Shield, um, you notice there is sort of a wolf-looking head on each of them, so that makes me interested as to what the legendary Pokemon will be. I'm pretty interested for that as well. So, the game will be dropping in late 2019, forgot what year it was for a second, um, later this year, probably close to Christmas, um, and I'm very excited. Uh, I will say I'm not excited to the point of like, hey, I want it day one and I want to play through it day one. Um, if it comes out in November, I'll probably wait till Christmas. So I think that's a nice middle ground. I definitely want it soon, but it's not like Moon version where I went to Walmart at midnight and called ahead and <laughs> then came home and started playing it as soon as it came out. So, I think it'll be fun though, and it will be cool to have that on the Switch. Nickman making a real push. Whoa! Boys will be boys. You know, it'd be kind of funny to learn self-destruct. Not, not in the sense of our fallen soldier a couple episodes ago, but because, uh, can you imagine some crazy instance where... You know, think of Verner's at the second gym, where we're like, hey, we possibly will be sacrificing him in this battle, and then just clicking self-destruct as a last resort. I don't think it's a very feasible strategy, so I did not teach him that, uh, but that's kind of funny that he learns that before an electric attack. Like, are you kidding me? Before you shock anything, you're just gonna blow up? Uh, hey. I guess that's how they do things down in Georgia. Man. So we see a Meowth hitting the field, and yeah, I really would like better attacks before I can use him regularly. Uh, but at this point, with Sonic Booms low on, eight, on PP, and 20 damage not being as, as great as it was earlier in the game, um, I, I think we're still gonna switch train him until he's about 24 until he's about 24 years old. Uh, but congrats on reaching the legal drinking age, Nick Man. Enjoy your natty lights, like that one, uh, the Keystone guy from Lieutenant Surge's gym. So Lass has another Meowth, okay. We'll keep mowing these guys down. But I feel, <laughs> I say this every time, I feel good about where the team's at. Um, you know, there, there's a little scary things happening every once in a while. That Nidoran horn attack was fairly scary. Obviously, yes, Rock Tunnel obliterated us as we did not expect self-destructs. Um, but I feel good level-wise about the team, barring anything crazy, which there's always a chance crazy stuff will happen. But I feel pretty good, uh, especially with Nick Man catching up is 
soon as he did. Um, well, that was scary. <laughs> that could have been really bad. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> uh, two more quick attacks should do the trick there. And uh, was that payday or scratch? <laughs> or bite? <laughs> Man, that's doing a lot of damage. We're going to get Kevin right out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't expect that in a, a last battle. Uh, meow. That's that's real nice, real nice. But as the team <laughs> is still intact, uh, I'm gonna put Kevin in the front as we seek our next encounter. And of course, since I did the homework on this one, I know what we're gonna get, uh, or at least what we're going to encounter. But I will leave that for the. The surprise of you beautiful people at home. Maybe it's going to be the first one here. Um, and I'll also leave it a surprise of if it's something I deem worthy of adding to the team or not. And really that in and of itself is a mixed bag. Because this is one of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon. Um, and maybe top 5, top 10 for sure. And while I do love this Pokemon... Not saying true. Um, because of typing reasons, it's not gonna fit in with the current squad as we stand. But we might, there it is. So Volpix, AKA our friend Fabby, is the next encounter. And we're gonna hit him with a gust. Um, I don't think that'll knock him out. Okay, that was pretty close. That was real close. But uh, <laughs> we still should be able to catch it uh, with a Pokeball here. Triple Jiggle. All right, Vulpix was caught. So yes, Vulpix is one of my favorite Generation 1 Pokemon. Uh, I never got to use it in original Gen 1 because I had red version and you get Growlithe in this route. Um, but I did get to have a Vulpix and then Ninetales when I played Leaf Green version years later, which I think, yeah, that was my first Nuzlocke, uh, of course, before the channel, but the first Nuzlocke I did was Leaf Green, and Ninetales was one of my better members. Um, I had Venusaur then, which was uh, a shady move in and of itself. Let's roll the dice. But uh, I, I used one of the Nuzlocke rules of where the number on your trainer card dictates which starter you get. So like one through three is grass, four through six is fire, five through <laughs> seven through nine, this is the, these are the people doing your taxes, uh, is water, and then zero is, is a pick em. And I got somewhere in one through three. So uh, I chose Bulbasaur and that was a challenge, let me tell ya. Let me tell you, it just doesn't quite live up to the hype like these other ones. And I guess I kind of forgot Kevin was in the front, but that's okay. I mean, we're just working with poly wags here. Nothing but wags. So I'll switch, um, I'll switch Nick Man in if it looks like we're going to get something with decent experience coming up next. Uh, but if it's another poly wag, I'll, I'll probably just put someone else in. Kevin going to 27. Is he ever going to get good moves? Guess not. Um, yeah, we'll put Nick Man in as we see Polly Whirl hitting the field. Level 22, but, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling too confident after some questionable moves earlier. Uh, and, and this reminds me, uh, I was watching a Hayden Wi-Fi battle recently, and he had a, a Polly Wrath named Frogger, uh, but he thought of another nickname during the battle. He was like, Next time I get a Poliwag, I'm naming it Tad Swole. I think Tad Swole would be a sick nickname. So Drat came up short. That's that's how you gambling. That's how gambling addictions start. I know there's a trainer to the left there, but I can't remember. Okay, so that's the path to Celadon. But we got this man first, and he says, "You look good at Pokemon, but how's your chem?" This has gotta be a super nerd, right? Okay, yes, we have Sheldon Cooper himself, and I love that, ooh, a little Voltorb v, oh, versus Kevin, forgot to switch our, our boy in, 
Um, I love how they called him Super Nerd. I just can't can't get over that. I love that it's like we're gonna really put down the nerds, even though they're the ones playing this game. Am I right, Sergio? So uh, Voltorb going down there. A little bit of experience. Uh, coughing is gonna come out next. We'll put Austin in. We'll put Austin in against a little Vape Nation Team Rocket action here. And, you know, I've been using Seismic Toss every time, but I'm starting to think Ember is probably doing more than 27 damage. <laughs> so, the fact that you guys are not screaming at me uh, about that is... I really just say thank you for your patience. Uh, thank you for your patience with that. So, Coffin goes down, and we've got another Voltorb next. Okay. Just lining them up and shooting them down. Shooting them down. We got down to uh, some low HP a couple times here <laughs> with uh, with Kevin. That was scary. That was scary. Not gonna lie. That that would have been straight up a blunder. I mean, compared to what we've seen in past deaths on this channel, uh, that would have straight up been my fault. Whereas I can at least shift the blame a little bit on the other ones. So we get a Magnemite here, and for you Millennials out there, this is not Steel-type yet. So this is not super effective. Uh, I've probably made that joke before, but uh, it's going to be a three shot for Ember, which is alright. Looks like Magnemite is decent special defense. Uh, but it goes down nonetheless, and Austin will grow to 28. So, man, we're making moves here in terms of the levels. Ow, Meltdown. So before I forget, I'll put Nick Man back in the front. We want him just a few levels higher before we cut him loose. And actually getting better moves would be nice as well. But we're going to sprint straight through that path and get to the route heading into Celadon City. And I did do my homework there as well. And uh, can confirm, hashtag can confirm, um, there's nothing but duplicates in that route. I think Fabi was there as well. But uh, besides that, it was just like Pidgey, Meowth, and uh, Bellsprout. So, uh, <clears throat> what was that? I didn't hear anything. So we're going to drop Fabby off right here and take a look at this beautiful city. So we are going to deposit down to the Fabster. And uh, you never know if, if he'll make an appearance later. Uh, if we need you know, a special attacker, um, we are at the gym that he would be perfect in. But uh, with that, you know, let's let's walk around just a little bit and see what we see. Um, of course, we have the big mart here, or maybe maybe it's the one of the Celadon Mansion. Okay, is, is this what I think it is? I'm I'm gonna hold off on what I think it is until I climb these stairs. We're gonna climb them all. We're gonna climb them all and go over here. Oh, what? Did I go up one floor too many? Okay. What's up? What's up? Is that right? I'm the game designer. Filling your Pokedex is tough. When you finish, come tell me. Okay, well, I've never finished the Gen 1 Pokedex. I believe our boy Cornus has done that. Um, of course, you've got the Mew... Uh, I don't know if it's called a glitch, but whatever you want to call it, um, how you get Mew. Uh, question is, how do we get over there? Because there's a part of this mansion I want to go into. Do I have to go in from the top? Might as well check it out. Now that I'm so invested in this, I'm, I'm going to check it out before we wrap this one up. Because I think there is... I think there's more to be found here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A little, little cheeky extra for, for the kids. So, we are now at the top of the mansion through the back door. And what do you know? We got an Eevee. And heck yes, we're going to nickname this. Um, you know, we already do have a fire, a water, and an electric type. But getting a, a Jolteon, Vaporeon, Flareon is some serious power. So you know what? I'm going to do what the pro YouTubers do. 
Um, I am going to name this after a friend of the program. And I am going to leave it up to you guys in the comments to choose what we evolve this into later. And we're probably not going to evolve it right away. Uh, we might. I don't remember if Eevee gets any good attacks before evolving it. Um, but the question is, who do we name this after? And there is an easy choice, uh, in my opinion. He's not a frequent watcher of this series, to my knowledge. Um, but he is definitely a friend of the program. He was in the last episode of Mission Nostalgia. And so Dan, comma, CPA is going to be our Eevee. And what level do we get this guy at? Holy sugar, that's a good level. That's a good level. Man, those are good stats pre-evolution, and it's got sand attack even. So with that, we're going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy today's episode, please leave a thumbs up down below, and make sure to vote on what you want this Eevee to evolve into. With that, me and Sergio, we're going to see you next time for the next episode. Game Slam, signing off.